just to illustrate how incredibly controlled our society is, ladies and gentlemen, as we start this live worldwide Tuesday edition. The hit show, The Bible, that had 15 million viewers on average per show. That's about four or five times record cable viewers for other top shows. I mean, I've been in top shows on channels that have 2 million viewers per show, like Ventura's Conspiracy Theory. And I've been on Discovery Channel shows that had 3 million that they called hit shows. This show had 15 million on average, sometimes as many as 18 million. They're now removing the devil figure that I'd say looks 80% like Obama. Think about that. All because in casting, the devil looked a little bit like Obama, and you can't have a dark-skinned devil. And so it's, 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 it's been removed from the next set of the series that's coming out. Meanwhile, WorldNet Daily got notice from Google they're not going to let them carry their ads anymore because they ran uh, the headline, Black Mobs uh, Continuing to Attack Whites, which is what's happening all over the country. It's just a fact. Google accuses WorldNet Daily of hate speech. Yeah, Google banned us on a Google store we tried to open four years ago from selling the Obama deception. And iTunes also refused the Obama deception twice, uh, saying uh, that it was culturally inappropriate. Inappropriate. This is the tyranny that we're dealing with. But if you want to uh, build abortion clinics on the corner of every black neighborhood and openly uh, in their own documents say it's to exterminate blacks, that, that, that's fine. You know, just wiping out the blacks, period, is, is a good thing. Uh, but uh, if you report on the racial animus being pushed by the Democratic Party, creating a climate where attacking white people uh, is, is fashionable, not just by blacks, but by Hispanics, you name it. I mean, it is epidemic in Austin epidemic and the police see nothing hear nothing um it's like the monkeys that cover their eyes cover their mouth cover their ears uh, because of political correctness but simply amazing meanwhile it's a top story up on drudge report jersey city tackles snow removal as new jersey deals with salt shortage and then buried in the article homeland security is involved with their bureaucracy blocking the salt getting removed. The New Jersey Department of Transportation Commissioner says the salt shortage could force him to close major highways, roadways during storms. Simpson says the U.S. Department of Transportation told him he was found two barges that could carry a total of 15,000 tons in New Jersey in about three weeks. Uh, but um, again, it's, it's Homeland Security uh, bureaucracy. I'm convinced that a waiver a couple of days ago would have had the salt here already. The 1920 Federal Maritime Act requires all ships fly an American flag, and the government has yet to issue a waiver to allow the ships to make the delivery of the salt without it. And that's just an example of the total bureaucracy meant to shut down this economy and this society. Why don't they just have illegal aliens drive the boat? And they'll give them free tuition, free gas. They can even drunk drive the barges if they want. I mean, that's just what this all comes down to. And we've got uh, Phyllis Schlafly coming on to the Eagle Forum, really an icon in the constitutional conservative libertarian movement. They've commissioned big major studies to deal with the real demographic moves to open the borders up completely and what that's going to mean. And that'll be the end of the country. That's the globalist plan. No other nation has borders as open as us. No other nation brings in immigrants and puts them on welfare like the U.S. does. Uh, it's simply amazing, and it's a political move. That's all coming up. I haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg. There's huge gun news coming up straight ahead as well. Where to begin today? Let me just give you some of the some of the main stacks here. Obviously, uh, there is a video up on Infowars.com, and, and this info came out last year actually, but is only now getting attention. Uh, and um, a former top admiral, retired admiral, says Obama conspired with America's enemies to kidnap Chris Stevens. And that was a very early on um, idea of actually people like Dr. Steve Pachinik on the air was that it was meant to be a fake kidnapping. 
But there's also a lot of evidence that it was a cover up for arms transfers and that there was a double cross within that operation. But we're going to play that uh, clip coming up. Also, I told you this a long time ago because it's actually well known in intelligence circles. Uh, and I have connections to those. Report Japan secretly developing nuclear weapons. Tokyo begins arms buildup in response to East Coast China sea tension. Let me give everybody a news flash. Japan's had nuclear weapons for at least 20 years. And so has South Africa. South Africa's had them since the 70s. Bioweapons since the 70s. Israel's had nukes since the 60s. And I just can't believe how naive the public is not knowing this. In fact, the nuclear club states are probably double what they officially say. North Korea's got them. I was told by a high-level special forces commander that they had scans and facts and plans to go into Iran and have to go into mountain redoubts and fight multi-thousand level troops to be able to get in and be able to take out hidden nukes in mountains in Iran. And he wouldn't tell me everything, but he basically said it was, the plan is to nerve gas the hills, and the Iranians know this, I could say it on air, nerve gas them, and then with high tech full body suits they've got, and still they leak, send in US special forces to try to blow up the nukes. Because they don't even have bunker busters that'll go into these hills and knock these out. You know, they had some missions like that in World War II where they'd have guys land 50 miles away and, and go in by uh, ski. I forget the name of that mission. And they snuck into the underground bases and blew up the uh, V-1 base. That's a famous case. I forget, uh, I forget the actual name of that operation. The point is, that's the, believe me, the NSA is going to be listening to that. If they weren't listening live, they're going to be listening to it later. But... That's the kind of issues that are going on, ladies and gentlemen. So I've covered two articles now. I said I'd mention headlines and then uh, get back into it. Uh, the feds, I don't remember it was Operation Crossbow. We can look it up. It was uh, British uh, special forces in one case. It was American British in another. Then they would uh, look at allied programs to sabotage V1 World War II. There was another one where they blew up the heavy water. They blew up... The they blew up the heavy water reactors underground, but then also a shipment had already left. So they had to t time the bomb in the in the ferry in the bottom where it blew up right in the middle of the lake. They did a great job on that as well. Um, yeah, Norwegian heavy water sabotage. Yeah, that's one of the reports. I forget the name of that operation. It was a German nuclear energy project. That was uh, Operation Grouse. I forget the one underneath the mountain blowing up the V1 missiles, though. Uh, anyways, um, with Verna von Braun, barely made it out of that explosion. Come over here and run NASA, <laughs> along with Goddard and the rest of them. But anyways, uh, continuing uh, with the news, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jersey City tackles snow removal as New Jersey deals with salt shortage. And uh, they've got plenty of salt, but the feds won't let them have it. Uh, just like they did with Katrina, not letting the thousands of fire departments and police departments from Texas and Louisiana, Arkansas, you name it, ready to come in and restore order instantly, unlike uh, the lawless New Orleans police, and uh, told to stand down. And then when the county police tried to restore power and stuff, the feds cut the power lines. And we've played the clip of the sheriff talking about it. While, while he waited and followed orders of the feds for four days while his mother's cell phone still worked, and she would call him and he'd say, I'm coming to today, I'm coming tomorrow, mama. And finally, he got there and his mother was dead. Imagine you're the sheriff and your mother's dying with three feet of water up to her bed in a hospital in downtown New Orleans. And you follow the Fed's orders and don't go get her out. When there were high and dry highways right to the hospital, they just wouldn't let people walk out on those as well. That is what you get from this federal government. That is what you, let me just give everybody a little news flash here. And I'm no hero. And my mother is in a hospital and they're blocking the police and others from going in and the Coast Guard from delivering uh, uh, diesel fuel for generators and everything so FEMA can run everything and have a bigger disaster and say they need more funds later. I'm going in to get my mother, and you better not get in my way. And, of course, in the past, no one would act like this because everybody would go in and get their mother. Nowadays, police chiefs and people will sit there while their mother dies to follow orders of a criminal rogue government. Don't ever forget that, folks. 
that lets you know what we're dealing with in this society. Here's a really big stack of news that we're going to get to uh, after I first cover the new Benghazi developments. Rockefeller Brothers, Pepsi behind gun grab agenda. Now, I already knew this and you already knew this, but this is the kind of articles we need to see, and I appreciate Kurt Nemo doing this. <clears throat> if you go look who funds anti-private property movements for, for the general public, if you try to look at who finances higher taxes on the middle class and poor, if you look at who finances victim disarmament anti-gun movements, if you look at who finances globalism and the end of sovereignty, if you look at who finances derivatives and, and, and the promotion of them, it is always literally Fortune 20 or so. And always at the top is Carnegie Endowment, Rockefeller Brothers, Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, of course, the usual suspect, George Soros, and, and uh, Exxon and Mobil and, and Google and the Carnegie Endowment. I think I already mentioned them. And, and here it is, Rockefeller Brothers Foundation. That's their biggest one. Pepsi behind gun grab agenda. And it's got the Aspen Institute, top globalist think tank, with all them up there pushing the disarmament of the American people. I mean, th th this is foreign multinationals. Pepsi's a big part of Bilderberg. They actually finance it. These are people with armed guards, helicopters, men with machine guns guarding them. They all own guns on record. In fact, in one of the articles, it actually shows the lady who's anti-gun, you know, firing an AK-47. In fact, a lot of times they're obsessed with guns. They just don't want you to have them. That's the instinct of a crook, an instinct of a disgusting control freak. And then confirming what the mayor already said up in upstate New York, and now over 50 mayors have quit uh, the uh, mayors for enslaving the American people. I mean, mayors against illegal guns. Uh, Bloomberg's uh, organization, his cartel, his syndicate, his uh, racketeering organization, that's what it is, trying to violate my civil rights on record in an organized, deceptive manner. The plan is to ban our guns. Well, now a New York assemblyman in the State House has been in the meetings and said, Safe Act, Democrats wanted to confiscate guns. Yeah. I mean, they've already said that. I mean, Bloomberg's been honest about that before, but they go on the news and go, nobody wants your guns. Everywhere we get control, we take them all, but just let us register them and we'll just shut down any private sales. Just, just like out of the road warrior where Humongous is saying, just give us the gas, we spare your lives. Hey, we got to work with Humongous. He's really nice. I'm going out there to be friends with him. You go out and you get killed and or you know tortured and strapped to the front of a Trans Am. I mean, it, it, it's just, you people need to stop being so naive, okay? These are not well-meaning liberals. These are hardcore wolves run by offshore mega banks that run the major militaries of the world who literally run the health departments and jack your food and water with poison on record. On record, Nico Science and many other publications written by them. And they think you're stupid because this is all public and you don't care. They say you deserve it. I don't deserve it. You understand that, Holdren? I don't deserve it, Soros, and you don't have a right to do it to me, scum. And universal law says I have a right to fight you. And I'm fighting you with the information war because it's the most effective. We're identifying you scurvy rats, you scallywag, traitorous, instinct of evil, degenerate scum. And you will. You know what Johnny Cash says, you can run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time. But sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. You can hide your hand working in the dark against your fellow man. But you know whatever you do in the dark will be brought to light. So that's uh, in that stack of news. <coughs> so I've covered, I've covered two of the small stacks. Um, let's continue attempting here uh, to get into this. Hillary goes mom on NSA, skirt surveillance fight. Iran seeks new Russian reactor in exchange for oil. We've got a huge uh, article here that's really important, exclusive. National clown shortage may be approaching trade organization fears. Uh, that's the New York Daily News. People don't like clowns. So, you know, continuing here, Venezuelan president calls, speaking of clowns, allies to uh, rival opposition protest. we got more on Al-Qaeda. Huge news on Soros betting against the world economy for a crash. Soros put, or that's betting, against for new listeners, hits record as billionaires downside hedge rises by 154% in 
in Q4 to 1.3 bill. Let's just put it to you this way. Uh, the big guys are headed for the exits. And I was talking to a... I'll just say it, a pretty good sized oil company head. Just a few days ago, I ran into... And uh, I recognized him when, I was, when he was talking to me. And I was like, oh, I've seen you on the news. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I, I watch your show. I'm here in town. And he's like, oh, no, they're getting ready to bring the stock market down at least 20%. He said, probably more. This bubble's going to be in deflating. And I don't know if he has all the answers. The point is, is that I can walk down the street and run into people that I recognize from CNBC. And they're, they're telling me what they really think. But, I mean, it, it's all over the news. You see the signs, all these big top people like Faber and Rogers and the list goes on and on, the Von Mises Institute. I mean, I don't know how long they can pump these bubbles up. And quite frankly, I don't want the bubbles to go down because it, it, the bubble's artificial. The globalists get to use it to take over. They get the first use of the money. It, it creates a consolidated economy. But still, we're riding on the back of it. When it implodes, it, it's going to be even worse, and they'll just get more power out of that. So, so that's coming up. But what I wanted to get to right now is an article we posted from um, – GOP, the daily dose.com. This is from Lou Dobbs, Admiral Obama conspired with America's enemies to kidnap Chris Stevens. And man, I got this from Colonel Schaefer that this was something that was bouncing around the Pentagon. He couldn't confirm it, but he said that was one of the main things. They knew it was, there was a cover up and it was staged. They just didn't know exactly what it was. So you can, in any criminal investigation, you can tell when you're not being told the truth and that something stinks. You just don't know till you get deeper or someone confesses. Or do you have prima facie evidence, you know, caught red-handed of exactly what went on? But we know that there was a cover-up and they got a bunch of weapons and it was Al-Qaeda and there was a stand-down order for almost eight hours. So this is a big bombshell. Talk about info bombs. This is it. It's even worse than we previously thought. A retired four-star admiral uh, is reporting that Barack Obama intentionally conspired with America's enemies to stage a bogus attack and the uh, kidnapping of an American ambassador so he could be negotiate the release of the hostages and bolster his mediocre approval ratings just prior to the election. And why does that make sense? Most of the security was ordered off. They were driving out, but there was a double cross. Some of them were killed at, at, at highway checkpoints. It was the Al-Qaeda forces put in years before to take over Libya in Benghazi, that western area on the border with, uh, with Egypt. That's one reason Mubarak had to be taken out. He was like, I'm not going to help Al-Qaeda get arms in Egypt and then overthrow uh, Libya. And so they had to remove him. That all came out. So we know that went on. But it fits into this story because, because a lot of people were told to get out. That's come out. So, so, so they wanted to have just kind of a stage firefight, have him give up and uh, hand uh, Stevens over. But the two sheep-dipped Navy SEALs, and by sheep-dipped above Navy SEALs in the CIA, there's many levels above Navy SEALs and Delta Force folks, they came running down and didn't and didn't follow the order to stand down. And so they started shooting them from behind, killing scores of them. Some reports are over 100. And so uh, the Arabs went completely wild. And the rest is uh, history. You know what happened. They were going to use the kidnapping also as a cover to get into the three warehouses with all the missiles and then claim, oh, that's how they got them. So they have plausible deniability. Here's the admiral talking about that. And I, and I really think this theory is probably what happened. Here it is. This is a peculiar response on the part of the CIA. Well, it is at that. And it's also peculiar why we never have tried to secure our consulate. That could have been done immediately. And much information could have been protected possibly even more lives saved. Um, what's questionable is CIA's role and the Director of Naval Intelligence role in the bogus cover-up story of that this was a reaction to a, a spontaneous mob in a reaction to a video which nobody had seen. And again, that sounds like it was recorded on an electric razor, but pretty bombshell info, the full transcript. Uh, is up on Infowars.com. False flag event. Admiral Obama conspired with America's enemies to kidnap Chris Stevens. If somebody's got a better copy of that or the full interview, send it to us. We'll get it exchanged out on this uh, site. So what should you do to the Rockefeller Brothers Foundation? Well, they're tax exempt. Try to get their tax exemption taken away. They clearly are trying to violate people's God-given rights, civil rights, you name it, as a racketeering organization. And don't drink any filthy PepsiCo products. 
uh, where they do their flavor testing with fe uh, fetal cells. Just, I mean, they're just a total a agency of evil, literally. Uh, another J.P. Morgan banker leaps to his death. That makes it seven. And it's been more than 20, if you count them all up, all the other bankers jumping to their devs the last few months. Very suspicious. Uh, expert warns of hyperinflation. The American way of life will be destroyed. I want to get into that article. Public schools are preparing American children for a life in a police state. Excellent article. U.S. and EU are paying Ukrainian rioters and protesters. There's evidence of that. I wouldn't say U.S. and EU. That is criminal bankers that have hijacked the EU and U.S. have us in the exploitation phase using our money and treasure and intel to try to bring down the rest of the world. There, there's the proper translation. Uh, and uh, another one, radio station faked viral homophobic birthday invite. We're attempting to spur healthy discourse on a highly passionate topic. Yeah, the so-called uh, left, the so-called liberals are always false flagging everything. In fact, most of these cross burnings in yards, most of these church burnings, most of the swastikas on the dorm wall. In fact, I don't think I've seen a case with the dorm stuff that you see every few weeks. It always turns out that it was staged. False flag. Because that's the new religion at the universities is you don't go learn how to get a job or learn how to be good in business or learn how to be an entrepreneur or learn anything that's useful. You just learn how to obsess over whatever protected group you are. And you learn how white people are the devil. And everything else is wonderful. In fact, we did a report on it of gay false flag attacks uh, where we, uh, uh, Mark Dice actually did a video on that. I guess we covered it. Uh, but there it is up on InfoWars, InfoWars.com. But I do want to open the phones up specifically on topics um, like what's happening in the economy. I'd like to hear from you on that. What do you think of this admiral, former top admiral, four-star admiral, that's as high as it gets, um, coming out on Lou Dobbs, uh, Admiral James Lyons, saying the attack on the American consulate in Benghazi was the result of a bungled abduction attempt, the first stage of an international uh, uh, prisoner exchange that would have ensured the release of Omar Abdel Rahman, the blind sheik. But something went horribly wrong with the October surprise, although the Obama administration intentionally gutted secretly at the consulate uh, prior to the stage kidnapping. Former Navy SEALs Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty disobeyed direct orders to stand down, saved American lives, single-handedly killed scores of attackers. And the attackers, believing that the Obama administration had betrayed them, tortured Ambassador Stevens and dragged his body through the streets. It's clear Benghazi Gate is only a small piece of a much larger operation, an attempt to conceal what the new American calls the Obama administration's full role in helping violent jihadish and self-styled al-Qaeda terrorists. Uh, and uh, it just goes on. It just goes on from there. So th there he is saying it was a staged prisoner exchange. And, and, and really, you look at it in hindsight and all of our sources, that's basically what it was getting most of the staff out, then trying to shut them down so they wouldn't talk. And see, that's what's good about this story. It's a very sad story, but the good news is that the, most of the government's not evil. Most of the government's not corrupt. In fact, they're really hardworking, upstanding people, especially in the military. I mean, they, they, they're not trying to hire idiots for some of those more specialized positions. And it's small criminal networks operating from the top. This happens throughout history. Or rogue groups throughout the structure, but as you get higher up, it gets easier, who are doing this, and they're always getting their operations blown because other people who aren't criminals come out and speak out about it. Now, they had uh, destroyer captains come back and tell the San Diego Herald Tribune in 1964 when their rotation ended, uh, when the ships came back six months later, it was in the paper. I've got a copy of it. I've shown it on air before. You can look it up. It was never a rumor that the Gulf of Tonkin, oh, there's a conspiracy theory the Gulf of Tonkin was staged to get us into the Vietnam War with the Gulf of Tonkin resolution. Well, no, it became a conspiracy theory and a rumor when those two captains and others went public, saying our ships were not attacked. This appeared to be a provocation to get us into the war. Well, as you know, uh, on the 40th anniversary in 2004, they released hundreds, well, they released thousands of hours, but there were hundreds of hours just on the start of the Viet the official start of the Vietnam War um, in uh, 1964 
uh, with LBJ and Robert McNamara. And they're, they're showing you some transcripts of that on screen right now if you're a TV viewer. Uh, but it, it, boom, we were right again. Well, we weren't right again. We didn't look into a crystal ball and say the Gulf of Tonkin was staged. I remember being on Discovery Channel shows and others where they would go, Jones thinks everything's staged. From uh, the May in 1898 to the Gulf of Tonkin in 1964, uh, to blah, blah, blah. I don't think they were staged. It's come out, they were staged. It's kind of like, Jones thinks we orbit the sun. No, I don't think that. Jones thinks water is H2O. I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm not smart, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just informed on things that matter. What I am is instinctive. I instinctively don't like to be a slave. I instinctively take it personally. I instinctively get aggressive. I instinctively have defense mechanisms that activate in me when I see total tyranny taking over. I was a mainline libertarian Republican in 95 or so, and I got on air and I was given so much info by people that were more awake than me and military people and folks that worked at the NSA and telecoms and because nobody else was covering this stuff then. It didn't matter if I was a stuttering kid on the radio. And because of that, because I was a conduit and I came off unprofessional at times, the system thought I'll just ignore him. Just everything worked perfectly by the grace of God that I was able to get to this point. But I know their program. I've been doing this 19 years, folks, and I know their program, and I know I'm right. And I know that by the grace of God and your prayers and your action, all the good people in government, out of government, you name it, we have held this back for so long. And what I was getting at in that last rant is Benghazi, people always say, oh, if they staged Gulf of Tonkin or if they staged 9-11 or if they staged Benghazi or if they staged Fast and Furious or if they staged all this stuff or the Boston bombing, it would come out. It has come out. It has come out. I mean, Cy Hirsch has gone public saying 100% of the bin Laden raid is fake and a lie. That's a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner who I know listens to the show. Keeps saying he'll come on for years and never does it. And I'm not criticizing him. I get being busy and not wanting to do more work, but... <clears throat> or, you know, being criticized going on that radical show. Like, hey, come on, man. Those labels don't work anymore. Yeah, he said one big lie was the quote. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist slams pathetic U.S. media. So, so here's the issue, ladies and gentlemen. The denial is not getting us out of this. It's making it worse. And I know our listeners are not in denial. But it's now time to get the general public out of denial. And, and, the, and the general public is, is actually ready for that to a certain extent. I want to hear from you about Benghazi. I want to hear from you about Fast and Furious. I want to hear from you about the paradigm shift we, we see happening. And do you think it's safer? I'd like to hear from people that are critics out there. A, do you think I'm lying about all this stuff? Or B, do you think I'm interpreting it wrong? I mean, I'd like to hear your rationale. Or I'd like to hear from people out there who, who think that it can't be beaten, so that's why you're not speaking out. I'd like to hear from anybody on, 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 on the subject of Benghazi Gate, these cover-ups, where we are as a society, Soros betting against the stock market and the debt. I've got some Second Amendment news I'm going to cover first, then go to your calls. The toll-free number to join us on air is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. But I do want to talk about the state of the world, where you think the world's going, what do you think the globalists are going to do to try to keep their agenda going forward? Because, because it is in trouble, it is stalling on, on many, many fronts. 800-259-9231. And I'm not saying first-time callers, but, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, the standard inside baseball kind of Cass Sunstein cognitive infiltration infighting stuff. I'll entertain you for 10 seconds, but I got to move on just because it just gets really old. And I, I'm in a paradigm of waking up those that aren't awake, reaching out, realizing we can win, realizing we can turn the tide, realizing we're selling freedom. That's a lot more popular than tyranny. It's like selling snow cones in hell or it's like selling an electric blanket with a battery solar power system to the Eskimos. I mean, this is some popular stuff here. 
and, and we've got the moral high ground, we should stop being so intimidated. Look, I love the militia. It's part of the Second Amendment. But I don't like the fact that it's led so many times by weekend warrior types who are in fantasy land and it's like it's like paintball or something and they meet behind the barn and they roll around in the dirt and they imagine everyone's watching them and you know they're all paranoid and 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 and, and then I mean a militia should be spending a third of its time cleaning firearms firing them uh, be, being proficient and the rest of the time in community outreach trying to feed the poor, wearing suits and ties, going to county commissioners and city council meetings, running for office, acting like the legitimate leadership, not acting like you're part of some secret James Bond organization. By the way, does James Bond wear Southeast Asia camouflage like all the militia people I know? No, he wears a suit and tie. And I'm telling you, folks, we, we that's who we're looking for is 1776 operatives organically businessmen, successful people, folks that know how to get stuff done. You don't need to hear ideas from me. You know what to do in your area. Take over, legally, lawfully, sell freedom, undermine the enemy, discredit them. Go, 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 go. We don't have a lot of time. We've already had major victories. We are in a battle with the globalists. We've got a chance here. But the enemy knows they're in trouble and they're trying to close the gates on us. And so just get aggressive. Get aggressive. Go out and, and you know, give material and information. Our new police state issue with a magazine, the police you see on the street. We sell it at cost on the website. Big color magazine to wake them up. Explaining to them what's happening. Most police have never had the paradigm shift of seeing the decompartmentalization of how they're manipulated. Believe me, if they read it, they'll wake up if they're not already awake. Because it's the truth. And they'll go, wow, I never, I knew all this was going on. I didn't understand the pieces and it's not because they're stupid, it's because this is very sophisticated, folks. This is very, very sophisticated psych warfare the globalists have put us under. By the way, speaking of InfoWarsStore.com, we have the new Molon Labe with the Spartan helmet, the crossed M4, 223 rifles, and the victory laurel around it. My design, again, my concept, I'm really proud of it, and it is the all-time bestseller ever that we have ever put out. And I knew it would be our best selling uh, because it's the best looking t-shirt we've ever put out. And it is now the best seller. It did sell out. And when I heard the limited amount they'd ordered, I said, look, I'm telling you to be the best seller. It's made in America, by the way, part of our made in 1776.com line. And the good news is I already had them when the stuff came in two weeks ago before we even put it up for sale. I already had them reordering even more. And the women's shirts come in next week as well that are gold, actual gold kind of foil uh, and, and the men's are kind of a more manly, goldish, bronze, gray. There's an InfoWars Molon Labe variant, and they come and take it, Molon Labe, uh, in Latin. And we have the Made by Navy Seals and other Navy vets, and there's other vets as well, part of the group here in America, but owned by Navy Seals, made in 1776.com. They put out an exclusive um, navy blue, almost black casing with a gold 50 cal colored bullet with 1776 Worldwide bottle opener, bottle breachers, what they call it. And it's hot and it's made in America and it supports vets. So that's the newest items there at MadeIn1776.com. That leads you right to the area on InfoWarsStore.com that has all the Made in America uh, products. And some of the other t-shirts on the main side are Made in America as well. But this is our exclusive line of products, folks. The 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 I didn't even know this, but it turns out the folks that make our uh, belt buckles uh, are mainly veterans and the owners of a veteran. Strangely enough, a Navy veteran again. I guess there's a lot of entrepreneurs from the Navy. But the whole point is uh, that it's just all there. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, you can go to InfoWarsLife.com and you can get the proprietary. Uh, we've, we've had it tested for metals, you name it. Non-detectable at every level. The cleanest iodine you can get. Turns blue on paper, not black like other iodines. It is real nascent atomic iodine. And it is double the strength, half the price of leading competitors, literally. Survival Shield, nascent iodine, $29.95. And regardless, your purchase supports the broadcast. Take it. See what it does for your energy, your skin, your organs. It's done amazing things for me. We're only bringing you the very best at InfoWarsLife.com. There's also the Fluoride Shield that has the nascent iodine in it. And it's in a two-ounce, double the size bottle. And four other key compounds known to detoxify heavy metals, fluoride, you name it. 
uh, it, 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 it's my favorite of the overall products and the best deal. It's double the amount, only $10 more than the uh, fluoride, uh, uh, than the InfoWars uh, Survival Shield. The fluoride shield is the best deal up there. And, of course, we're still running the special on Super Male Vitality. It is sold out, but we're not saying that on the site because, really, technically, more comes in next week. Uh, so you'll get it very, very quickly. 15% off on Super Male Vitality. You've heard the rave reviews on that with all the estrogen mimickers. Are adding to the water and so much more and that's in the food it, it just it, it, it's good to get your body balanced out and this is the purified organic concentrated eight super herbs and compounds known to boost your body's testosterone and other things and by the way this really has a big effect on the ladies we could relabel it and call it women's uh, you know, super feminine vitality or something or super uh, venus vitality there's really no point because it actually, with women, has dramatic effects. And I'm just going to leave it at that. We do not advertise it as an aphrodisiac, but that's what it is. <laughs> Anyways, the, uh, I'm sorry. The point is we're naturally supposed to be happy and aggressive and frisky, folks. They've put us in this zombie state. Super male vitality. That's what I use to go into overdrive here on the air. Uh, again, you can also call toll-free, 888 Two five three three one three nine er, and don't forget this hour was brought to you by mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex, mypatriotsupply forward slash Alex, and you'll find the best non-GMO foods. Last twenty five years, great customer service, the highest quality storable foods out there. Don't be dependent on the system. Mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex or eight six six two two nine. 0927 mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex. Your phone calls, tons of news, and the key Second Amendment news. Uh, it's a trifecta. Uh, Rockefeller Brothers, a uh, Pepsi behind gun grab. New York Assemblyman confirms what mayors have said in the meetings with the SAFE Act. They plan to confiscate the guns. We have video of that in the legislature. Just talk about it. Ohio sheriff who refused to renew concealed carry permits of legal and lawful citizens has been indicted on 25 counts of all sorts of crime. Money laundering, theft, covering up, uh, tampering with evidence, just on and on. Yeah, it, it's always scum that want to disarm the general public. Only scum would want to have the guns and not have other people have guns. Only scum wouldn't want their neighbors to be armed, but they're rich in establishment and so they can have waivers and own guns. What the world kind of country is that? Well, they've taken the guns everywhere else. They want to act like they don't want our guns. They're a pack of liars. We've got them. You need to stop letting them have the moral authority and get back in their face. Let's go to your phone calls. Let's get one in right now. We're going to just, we got open phones the next hour. Got a fellow Schlafly joining us to break down the uh, immigration situation, which it doesn't matter if they do the immigration reform or not they've already fiated the, the the illegals already they already give them all the welfare and they're going to vote democrat it's over folks they can bring in people that'll vote to take our guns game over that's how you militarily take over in the 21st century and then of course the people they use to take over will be totally enslaved as well it's just disgusting tony in new york thanks for calling in what's on your mind today hey uh matt drudge actually gave you a good shout out this morning on twitter uh, about your interview coming up I didn't know that, man. Matt is so awesome, and I, I've been under the weather, so I haven't been doing as much. Re I usually do about four hours of research in the morning, and I've only been doing about an hour of it because I have had pneumonia, uh, and I'm getting better now. I had just light pneumonia in both lungs in the top, uh, but I didn't know that. I usually follow his Twitter every day. What did he say? Uh, he just uh, mentioned your interview and said it should be a fantastic because she's uh, really exciting also. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in fact, will you guys pull me the report from last week? Because I know they funded... Uh, I think it was a Pew Research, and then and they had some others showing all the numbers of what what the uh, amnesty thing will do. So thank you, Matt, for plugging that. I'm going to hold you over, caller. You got anything else you want to add, Tony? Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to really commend uh, the Super Bowl 9-11 truther, uh, Matthew Mills, for really kind of getting through the police state and uh, exposing the 9-11 uh, lie and really reaching so many people. I mean, I'm seeing so many new people. Yeah, well, I mean, that shows over. the power of the individuals. Stay there. I'm going to come back to you. I don't want to... We've got a whole hour of calls coming up. Steve and John and Wayne and JJ. Everybody stay Thank with us. You for listening Second hour coming up. Tell friends and family to tune in. That's one way to fight the tyrants. All right, Tony in New York, uninterrupted. You got cut off there at the end of the last segment.
We're taking calls right now. I got key Second Amendment news uh, coming up. I need a fly swatter. There's a fly in here. And I tell you, I'm going to kill it. Uh, continue. It's not even a fly. It's like a gnat. It's, it's not a fruit fly. It's bigger than that. It's, uh, it's driving me crazy. Uh, let's go. Uh, we can do that to the global. It's like little flies flying around it, actually. Like a big giant mothership fly is Hillary. Uh, and then like seeping out of her. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. She lays more fly eggs. I'm sorry. Yeah, she she gave birth to Obama, actually. Yeah, did you know Obama's actually her son? Uh, the product of her Congress with a uh, dead horse. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to... I'm sorry, folks. Tony in New York. I apologize. Tony, go ahead and make your point. No, don't apologize. I think I think you're right on. But uh, no, I actually found this really cool thing on the internet that could be used to fight um, or to kind of for activism. Um, I'm sure you've seen the Wi-Fi network. So when you go to connect your device to uh, something like a Wi-Fi network, you see all the different names. Yes, sir. They sell these devices called Wi-Fi pineapples that let you broadcast about like a hundred different Wi-Fi names, and you can make them anything you want. So you could have 9/11 was an inside job. You could make a hundred Wi-Fi networks with freedom messages and just carry this thing around with you everywhere you go. And people will see it um, because you could actually do some really neat things on it that will make um, – so whenever, every time someone pulls it out, you could actually connect to it and have it logged directly to Infowars.com. There's so many neat things you could do. Exactly. There are so many inventive ways for each individual every day to reach out to others. And, and just by doing that, it will have a huge effect. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, Alex. Hopefully uh, some of your listeners just automatically go Google it. I think it would be a great way to reach people. Anyways, keep up the good fight. Love you, man. Thank you, brother. We love you as well. You know, I realize what it is. I've been talking about Obama and his camp followers, the flies. Maybe these are Obama supporters that have showed up. And th there it is. I almost got it. Made a fly swatter. Maybe that is, maybe that's a drone. I'm being sarcastic, MSNBC. I didn't actually say that was a drone. They've already said, I believe, WASP live underneath the Capitol building or no, under the UN building. And everybody knows it's actually giant 18-foot-tall turkeys. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and talk to Steve in Texas. All right, I'm going to stop right there. Steve in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Last month you were mentioning Amazon's predictive purchasing ability. Yeah. Yes, sir. And that is, that is so pervasive that it's basically changing the way economists are able to predict the market. Instead of looking at market um, predictions, they're able to predict individual consumers and that's going to change the way advertising and everything is done in the future Sure, via your web id to all your devices tvs you name it uh smartphones they're going to deploy ads that are tailored to you and then it's just it's the end of your privacy right there and then they can also tailor your behavior by what they feed you falsely exactly the data mining is the future you will not be able to go to the bathroom without someone knowing about it the only way I see to combat it is to create a local economy. Um, my economist professor said the exact same thing about Amazon almost a week later. And uh, he said, you know, he doesn't want the future to be dictated by mega corporations. And it's everywhere. So you well, exactly. While we're being told to fight with each other over what, how much pigment we have on our skin, that's because they're discriminating us on our info, on, on our taxes. It's all going to these globalists. I mean, we're all being destroyed right now. I don't care what color you are, and we're busy fighting with each other over the diminishing artificial resources. And so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Go ahead. Yeah, and, um, you know, I was with you out there last year, tactical firearms and the Second, Amend uh, the Second Amendment's under attack, First Amendment's under attack. Uh, it's, it's bad. So you have to begin to network locally and take things back 50 years. Yeah, I'm just glad the Katie police outside of Houston didn't give anybody trouble for all being armed with what you call assault rifles and us out there bullhorning on the side of the road. And nothing bad happened. And the police didn't violate the First or Second Amendment. Wasn't that great? Yeah. I mean, the other day they had a Harris County Sheriff uh, SWAT thing. It looked bigger than a tank. I mean, it was jacked up like an 18-wheeler. It, it's horrible. Yeah, those are called full-power war wagons. It's incredible. Phyllis Schlafly of the Eagle Forum. A group fighting the globalist and promoting national sovereignty for, I don't know, 50-something years. She's going to be on the transmission coming up at the start of the next hour for 30 minutes. Amnesty equals suicide for Republican Party. Folks, if, if these were libertarians coming over the border, quite frankly, I wouldn't care if there were 30 million. I, and, and, but if they were white socialists coming across the border, I'd be against them. Uh, it's predominantly Latin Americans 
and they are absolutely, on average, close to 90% voting, anti-gun, anti-family, Democratic Party line. And again, folks, it's not that we're, quote, for the Republicans either. It's that the Democrats are taking over. And the Republican leadership wants amnesty, too. And the big banks want it. And they're giving money to try to run all the Tea Party people out and saying it's racist. No one lets illegals come to their country and give them all this welfare. We're going bankrupt, folks. We're already bankrupt. And you're going to legalize illegals? That's going to bring in even more. And we know where this situation goes. So... I'm going to repost on Infowars.com. I've got uh, Kit Daniels doing it right now. Amnesty equals suicide for Republican Party. And Phyllis Schlafly is going to be joining us. We're going to break all that down. I'm going to retweet Matt Drudge's tweet uh, today, uh, plugging the fact that uh, she's coming on. Because this is a big deal. And we need to talk facts. I can't go to Mexico and have a baby for free. Uh, I can't uh, go down there and get on welfare. And... It's just, it's insane. Mexico is a failed collapse state. And then they sell it like it's mean to Hispanics if you don't want totally open borders. And then Americans, on average, are so politically correct, they go, okay, we'll do whatever you say to the point of you can't even, the Discovery Channel and History Channel, uh, you know, are getting rid of any characters that are of mixed racial background in a bad light. I mean, here's one. Obama Satan lookalike cut from film version of hit miniseries, The Bible. The devil is on the cutting room floor. This is now a movie about Jesus. The devil gets no more screen time, says producer of the son of God. And that's all the political correctness. And Google, you know, won't let you talk about black mobs beating up white people all over the country. And they call that hate speech and is threatening to shut down basically World Net Daily with Google ads. We've got Joseph Farah on tomorrow to break all of that down. So this is the political weaponization of speech where you're not allowed to have your speech, but the establishment, the establishment is. And the Democratic Party operates as a cult now where in almost every case you can go out to California, especially, but also University of Texas in Austin where I live, kind of a... Um, bizarro world compared to the rest of Texas. Not that Texas is perfect, but I mean, it's fruitcake land. And you go down there and say, hey, we want to ban water for the earth. Al Gore says they, they signed the petition and we want to put gun owners in prison, all of them, and they signed the petition. And out in California, Mark Dice goes out and I mean, this is unedited, folks. This is what, I mean, he'll talk to 10 people and nine of them will say, yes, put gun owners in camps and kill them. If you say for Obama, we're going to put gun owners in camps and kill them. You've heard the, the audio here, the videos on Infowars.com. And they say, yes, we want to kill gun owners. They will do anything. They are in a cult. They don't know how to tie their shoelaces, literally. They just know how to support the Democratic Party and hop around acting trendy all day. They don't know about foreign corporations, only Democrat and Republican leadership. They have no idea about balkanization. They have no idea about real discrimination by the globalists and the rigged economy. All they know how to do is run around grandstanding. Now, I want to cover some Second Amendment news. We're going to go to J.J., Wayne, Kevin... Timothy, John, in fact, in the order, it's J.J., Wayne, John, then Timothy, and then Kevin. I'm going to get to all of you here in just a moment. But first, uh, I want to go ahead and get into this news report that's up on Infowars.com. Rockefeller Brothers, Pepsi behind gun grab agenda. And you can go in there and watch the video and see their own... Um, Web page, the Aspen Institute, which is like a Bilderberg subcommittee. And you can go see the heads of PepsiCo and the and the Rockefeller Foundation, Rockefeller Brother Foundation, admit they're funding the move to disarm the American people. I mean, let's talk about where this comes from. Ultra rich scum who've politically hijacked the country and are the biggest recipients of taxpayer bailouts and tax exemptions. I mean, they are the ultimate discriminatory. I mean, find out who funded Hitler. The biggest funder of Hitler on record was the Rockefeller Foundation. Then became Rockefeller Brother Foundation. I think it was like in 1910 or something. But so by the time they funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in the 20s and then Hitler, it was the Rockefeller Brothers. The literal group that, that literally created the Nazi Party, the proto-Nazi Party, 
And David Rockefeller went over there and spent time in Germany and was a double agent of the Germans and helped set him up when he was like, you know, 18 years old. I mean, these are, these are amazing people. I mean, I got to say, he set up every UN organization there is. I mean, you, you got to hand it to them. They, they really are busy little bumblebees. George Soros is kind of a modern example. He was a Nazi collaborator on record. And it's just so crazy to be informed and know that a Nazi, a proto-Nazi, this is the Nazi's daddy and mama that laid down on its back and literally spit out the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute and worldwide eugenics and Adolf Alois Hitler. And it's teamed up with Soros and Bloomberg and all these other Jews of all people going after the Second Amendment. I mean, it is just cuckoo, bizarro land. And, and then you've got all these camp followers like Michael Moore and Obama and Nancy Pelosi and all of it. I mean, it is insane. It is, it is so bizarre when you look at all the players and what's going on. But when you get down to it, it's just evil. It's authoritarians across the board, whether they be Chinese, whether they be German, whether they be Jewish, British. I don't care. They have an instinct in the elites to disarm their quarry. So that article is up on Infowars.com. Here's another one. Uh, and we're going to play the video of this. New York Assemblyman, safe fact, Dem uh, Democrats wanted to confiscate guns. Evidence that the gun control lobby's ultimate goal to disarm law-abiding gun owners surfaced last year in a short video clip that dovetails with the mayors that went public last week from a New York State Assembly session prior to the passage of the highly contentious SAFE Act. The video posted a month later by the Sandy Hook school shooting depicts Assemblyman Stephen F. McLaughlin attempting to address the topic of rejecting Democrat proposals from the bill. I have in my hand something here we received from the Senate which has rejected Democrat proposals in the bill. He replies to it and lists it, saying that everybody's got their own list of Senate rejections, so I don't have anything to show you. And he goes on to say, well, it sure does. When we talk about confiscation of assault weapons, it absolutely has the ability to dampen a compromise. And I remember the clip, actually, there's a clip where they talk about gun confiscation, about once they get the registration, they do the forced buyback. Well, we have the mayor pro tem, Mike Martinez, saying, once we register, we will come take your guns. So the point is, we, I mean, people that know what's going on go, of course they want the guns. Well, the general public still thinks they just want reasonable restrictions. You know, knock, knock. Oh, I, my car's broke down. Just, just, are you home alone, lady? Just let me in. The woman's got a bad feeling. The guy looks like a convict. Don't open the door, lady. Tell him, move on on the road. Um, you know, call 911 for him if he absolutely has to have help. Don't open the door in the middle of the night. Well, same thing, just open the door, let us in, turn your guns in, we're going to be nice to you. Open the door, let me put you in handcuffs, let me tie you up, and then I'm going to take good care of you. That worked well for the women that went with Ted Bundy. Let's go ahead and go to a part of this uh, clip, uh, proof Democrats want to register and then confiscate. And Joe, I have in my hands here uh, something that we received from the Senate, which is rejected Democrat proposals uh, in this gun bill. And I don't know that you've seen this or if you know that these are there or not. No, but we don't have our own list of rejected proposals okay. that the Senate rejected, so I don't have anything to show you. Okay. All right, so I won't address it then if you haven't seen it. I'll leave that one alone. Uh, okay, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. And uh, Mr. Speaker, on the bill. And by the way, I would recommend not to have that list shared because it really has the capacity to... Uh, uh, dampen the enthusiasm to compromise. Well, it sure does when we talk about confiscation of assault weapons. It absolutely has the ability to dampen a compromise. Mr. Speaker, on the bill. On the there you go. Don't share that list with anybody. I mean, look, let's stop playing here. We all know what you want. We all know the goal. You have a criminal instinct. I don't care if it's Central Africa. I don't care if it's Mexico. I don't care if it's California. I don't care if it's New York. I don't care if it's Illinois. The government's there, wherever they're criminal, wherever they're mafia, wherever they're gouging and taxing and pushing and harassing. And it's because they're all exempt, folks. You go look at all those kleptocratic regimes like France with the socialists. They're all exempt from the taxes. It comes out in the news. They all have Swiss bank accounts. But in the case of the EU, the bureaucrats are exempt from the EU federal tax. 
the, our Congress is exempt from most of the taxes. What? Now they're trying to pass legislation where their exemptions are secret. See, that's real discrimination. That's what I, you should feel really cheated by, that you've got to pay outrageous taxes while they're exempt. Because if they had to pay them, folks, they wouldn't be doing it. That's why you want justice. All men are created equal. As the Declaration of Independence said, and as Martin Luther King requoted, by created equals, you get the same rights, you get the same starting line. It doesn't mean you're really equal with every gift you've got from God. But you start at the same starting line. And justice is blind. Not, oh, well... You're a cop, so you're drinking and driving. We're going to let you go. Or um, and you're a politician, and uh, we caught you, uh, you know, stealing money. But that's okay. You know, we'll scratch our back. We'll scratch yours. It's disgusting, folks. And it turns your country into a big, giant, third-world nation. Now, we're going to be right back on the other side with J.J., Wayne, John, Timothy, Kevin, and others. Stay with us. Epidemic of potholes. Third snowiest winter in Philly on record. Second snowy is February in New York City on record, and that's in 300 years. Boston blanketed for ninth time in 16 days. Fast-moving storm creates whiteout conditions in Chicago. Yeah, my cousin just came down here for my uncle's memorial because they had a funeral, but they're all having a memorial this weekend so everybody could come. And he just said it's just hellish in Chicago, just absolutely hellish. And I'm looking at Drudge Report, DrudgeReport.com articles right now, but... Uh, the whole point is, is that it's just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. And by the way, the London Guardian doesn't say start prepping. They also say it's climate change apocalypse is upon us. No, it's the sun cool down in its cycle and it's the sun stupid and the earth gets hot and gets cold and we should pray for hot cycles because that's when we can grow more stuff, dummy. I mean, the old timers knew they went, they went through cycles and you know it too. You just want to make the public so ignorant and so superstitious and so dumbed down that they think if we don't worship the high priest Al Gore and he doesn't wave his magic wand when he's running around in a you know nightgown or whatever he does, uh, that uh, you know chasing a masseuse around, that if he doesn't you know be, engage in leprechaun activities and give us a pot of gold, we're all dead. I'm just sick of it. JJ in California, thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, how you doing, Alex? I am doing good, brother. Hey, I really want to thank you for inspiring me to. First of all, I've been a, a long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I actually created a YouTube channel uh, where I post a YouTube about Obama and what's going on, usually on an every-other-week basis. Uh, it's just when I get really frustrated. I'll oh, that's good. Every listener should be on the enemy platform YouTube. Everyone should have their own blog. Everyone should be doing something to be heard. And together, if everybody did that just from this show, it'd be over. If everybody just started getting active, it would overturn the system immediately. And I appreciate that. You really inspired me to do that. And I post it on my Facebook, and I also post it on my LinkedIn account, which I have. A, a well, good. Just plug it. Go ahead and plug it. Uh, thank you. It's called Obama Factor 727. And... Uh, the email is Obama Factor 727. Listen, that's great. I'm glad to plug it, but, but if I let people plug on and on, it'll, it'll just kind of get repetitive. And what'd you call in about specifically, sir, on the topics? A few things that, uh, that you've inspired me to talk about. First of all, I love it how Obama can wave a magic wand and uh, extend Obamacare until 2016. And the only reason why he did that, as you and I know, is to prevent tens of millions of people from losing their insurance policies. And, you know, obviously voting against the Democratic platform this November. So that was a very smart political move on his point. But it's even you more know. deceptive. For most people, That they're still kicking them off. It's false hope. That's even a lie. Do you understand that? Just like I told you, most people signing up who thought they signed up didn't. So it isn't three million like they say. It's not even a million. It's all fraud. It's, it, you, if you're going to tell one lie and get away with it, why not tell 85 jillion? And, and look at the state of Oregon. I mean, what a fraud there. They spent uh, $6 million on that website, and not one person has signed up. Not one. But they do that not on one. purpose. As I, And even Mainline News now says the websites nationally and at state levels don't work because they want to make it about the broken website, not about the fact you go on and they double your premium. My dad's is more than doubled. Mine is doubled. And most people in Texas were getting it. Where it's, it's, oh, it went up 30%. Oh, another, two months later. Oh, another 30, another 30. 
and, and I see my crew nodding out there. That's how it's working. They're just doing it like in the shark bite. It's not even in small bites, though. It's shark bites, but it's not in one, one big piece. They're just gobbling us up. But you heard him. He said it wouldn't raise your premiums. It would lower them, and you could keep your doctor. Doesn't matter it's a lie. Are you a racist, sir? Yeah. yeah. No. No, I just want to ask, how many times does Obama get to lie before someone stands up and says, we're going to impeach him? I mean, he lied about the video. He's lying about the IRS. He's lying about the, uh, the ACA. And what about the shovel-ready jobs that he's spent? We've got to go after jobs. the Republican leadership that is going, be nice to us, Tea Party, be friends, while they fund money with the Democrats to kill the Tea Party. They're like, you know, stand down, stand down, while they're firing on us. They run up a white flag and then launch an offensive while they have white flags waving everywhere. And, 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 and just like mainline pundits are saying, the Republican leadership doesn't want to go after the IRS because they want the Tea Party destroyed. We have to rally to the Tea Party with moral and financial support right now. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Great call. Uh, the demographic breakdown and, 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 and showing how those people uh, that would be legalized tend, tend to vote. And so we're going to um, break down the fact that this is a political class that wants to get full control by having a voting class that is on welfare and on different handouts who can then vote to enslave everyone else using the free society to enslave the society. Well, in a republic, you're not a pure democracy. In a pure democracy, you could have 51% vote to make the other 49 slaves. Or you could have, uh, you know, 51% vote to kill the other 49 if they thought they could get away with it. First, they want to disarm them and things like that. Uh, and it, it's, just, it's just incredibly obvious to see what's going on. She's going to be joining us. Look, here's the deal. I, I really just want to go to your calls. I'm going to give each caller about a minute. Make your point. I want to hear from you. We're going to go to the next person. As you hear each caller hang up, that's your chance to call in. 800-259-9231. Then I've got some other uh, Iranian hacking news, supposedly of Cyber Command, right as they try to pass the cybersecurity legislation. Big news on Venezuela, the economy, uh, and more that we will be getting to. But first, let's go to your phone calls. Wayne in Virginia, thanks for calling in. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, long-time listener, first-time caller. Okay, that's done with. Um, I just want to tell everybody how joyful it is to spread the word. Uh, I bought a pickup truck, and five months later, I sold it. I took the place back to DMV so I could get my uh, refund, and I started telling the lady, anytime I have a captive audience, I tell everything. But I try to lighten it up. You know, they go, how you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing better. The shrink let me out. And that lightens the situation. So I start telling her, about Agenda 21 and geoengineering, and she looks at me and goes, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, no, I don't. I'm sorry. She says, I sold you these plates. You told me all this before. I said, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry then. She said, well, I went home, and me and my husband looked up Agenda 21. Our house is now on the market. We are getting out of here. And, and so it's it's just so – you can't imagine how good it feels, the success. You're sitting there. You don't you don't see it, but when it, they look you right in the face and say they listen to you and they paid attention to you, it feels great. Well, that's the issue because we've got the truth. We've got the light in the dark. And, we I mean, it's true. We know what's going on. It's not that we're rocket scientists. We'll face the facts historically, not what the fake controlled state-run media or Hollywood has said. And people are hungry for it. I mean, not the trendies. I mean, they would jump in a, off a cliff if they thought it was cool to do. But the general public is starting to wake up. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it is fun. I mean, if you you walk into a restaurant and they sit down, how are you doing? Well, I'm in a restaurant. I'm hungry. You know, you, you lighten the situation up, and then you can just tell them anything, and they're a receptive audience. And I, I can't stop. I don't care where I am. If I go to the bank, I tell them about the Federal Reserve. I go to the grocery store. I'm telling them about GMO foods. I'm always on. And it is a great feeling when you find somebody that listened to you and, and is awake and is spreading the word now also. So I just wanted to pat you on the back and keep up the good work. And uh, that's about all I have, man. It's just, it's great to wake somebody up. It is, Wayne. It, it, again, it's good to find your fighting spirit again. It's good to decide you're not just going to accept all this. The globalists tell you you're powerless. There's nothing you can do. It's over constantly because they know you have power and they want to intimidate you with political correctness where you're afraid to be a cowboy at Halloween or a Native American or a geisha girl. 
They want to make everybody feel guilty, but them, the globalists that are really the guilty ones. The Democratic Party on record, the Ku Klux Klan Party, until the mid-1960s, they started losing elections against the Republicans that passed the Civil Rights Act under Eisenhower a few years before, and they said, well, we'll do race politics this way now, and broke the other direction. And it's worked great for them. And the Republican leadership is bought and paid for by the same interest. That's why the Democrats can't be beaten, because they're not up against opposition. So here comes the Tea Party, set up by Ron Paul and libertarians. The Republicans try to co-opt it. It blows up in their face and metastasizes, in their view, and starts taking over. And right now, they are in an emergency, like chickens with their heads cut off, running around at these corporate meetings on record. All hands on deck, throwing all the Democrat and Republican money they've got to crush the Tea Party. That's on record. That's even on Fox News now, they admit that. And the Republican leadership won't do a thing about the Tea Party having the IRS come after them. Let the crooked IRS come after you. Let them try to make stuff up. Go public. Big deal. I've had them do it to me. I'm not doing it. I'm paying their fake fraudulent taxes to the fake fraudulent private run for profit Federal Reserve. And if you're a 501c3, you have every right to promote the Bill of Rights and Constitution. They're liars when they tell you you can't. I'm not a 501c3, but the point is, that's what they're going after. The Democrats are squealing and yelling in the news this week going, I saw it Sunday, make it illegal to have a Tea Party 501c3, more IRS. These people are beating us. Well, yeah, because you're incredibly unpopular saying we didn't build our businesses and our kids don't belong to us. You are a bunch of freaks. To sit up there with a moral high ground up against loyal opposition with Boehner, who plays golf with Obama constantly. I mean, what a joke. Remove Boehner. Remove all of the leadership out of leadership positions. They could do that right now. Put Tea Party people in there and start explaining what's going on. And then people would come to the leadership and you'd have the Tea Party take the Senate and the House. We could save this country. We've just got to decide we want to do it. We've just got to decide we're not losers. Everybody's like, oh, we'll never defeat the New World Order. Oh, we can never be so. Alex, there's no way you snuck in Bohemian Grove. Uh, there's no way people got footage of skull and bones. There's no way that guy got on the NFL post press conference and took over. There's no way that's real. There's no way you, you actually built your media system by yourself. There's no way uh, that, uh, that you beat that guy arm wrestling. That guy's bigger than you. There's just no way you could... Uh, there's no way you you know there's no way you grew those uh, watermelons those are just too big there's no way there's no you built that house on your own there's no way uh, you know there's there's no way your son just wrote this uh, wrote this paper for school we just don't believe it it's too advanced we just well you're an adult and you're a moron my son's smarter than you I've put my son in you know private school before and they're like you wrote this paper your wife did and I'm like no my uh, nine year old son did. Because he reads, at that time, he's 11 now, he was reading adult literature. And it's because it's arrested development. My father was reading when he was four. He was reading adult literature when he was six or seven. My dad would be sent away on summers as training, folks. He didn't get sent to pick cotton one, one, one month in, in September or whatever because... The family, it sounded like my dad was in cotton fields. They sent him to teach him hard work. Then they sent him for two months to work in a machine shop in Houston when he was 10. And then they'd send him to work in a bank for three months. In the, you know, he, my dad was, that's what you did in the old days. You sent your sons, especially your daughters as well, to apprentice. So that they knew how to do everything. That's what a man knew how to do. No, he didn't do any of that. That, you know, they've taught us just to be incredibly weak. Like people tune in and watch like steer wrestling and they see some guy jump off a horse and grab a huge cow and throw it down. Like that can't be real because people don't believe in what a human can do. They have no. Well, of course, if you're telling us we're all a bunch of scum that walk off the edge of you know streets or into fountains or off bridges with our iPhones. That's what the globalists want to contend with. A bunch of jellyfish, ladies and gentlemen. God didn't build a bunch of crap. The New World Order builds crud. I'm sorry, I said I'd take a lot of calls. John in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, it was great to see you at the Second Amendment rally in San Antonio. And I wanted to speak quickly about a microcosm of uh, politics that's happening in Texas right now with 
Greg Abbott bringing uh, Nugent on to go to a few of his governor campaign stops. And then uh, he's in turn attacked by uh, Greg Hinojosa, or uh, Gilberto Hinojosa, Wendy Davis, Van de Pew, by saying, well, Nugent is uh, talking bad about our first African-American president. And the finer points of politics don't even come up, never mind that he's supporting the Second Amendment. Uh, never mind that anything is being said or wants to be talked about. It goes straight to the race card, straight against he hates women, and then end of discussion, shamed into the corner, and that's all. Well, I mean, let's face it. Ted Nugent is a red-blooded caveman who loves women and uh, and who never has done anything racist to anybody. And he, he grew up in Detroit, and a bunch of his band are black. So it's just, it's that's all they've got. I mean... You can't send a meme making fun of Obama now, or they make it take take it off your Facebook if you go to public school saying it's racist. We've played the teachers on air, the clips that students have recorded going, you don't criticize Obama, you can be arrested. These are authoritarians. And yeah, no, I think Abbott is probably one of the better candidates uh, for governor there. Uh, that or Jerry Patterson. Who do you like for governor? Uh, I like Patterson. I enjoyed meeting him there at the Alamo at the time. And as far as people waking up, I have to say I work in the pharmaceutical business. And um, uh, I work with about 40 to 50 people who all on an individual basis would l love to discuss the finer points of 9-11 uh, fiat currency, uh, media brainwashing, all of that. It's just about taking that second step over the line and doing something about it in your community as the last caller spoke to. Beautifully said. Thank you for the call. By the way, again, I'm not against pharmaceuticals. There are some great drugs out there. There's some great uh, doctors and nurses. It's that 50 years ago, they knew about side effects. They would pull a drug pretty quick if it was causing deformities, brain damage. Now they just go, conspiracy theory, none of this is possible when the drug insert says it can do it. It's like antibiotics. They're a miracle drug. The problem is they're, not, they're starting to not work. What happens when they don't work anymore? We're left with superbugs. I'm just pointing out the problems. And then you get something like a Gardasil that doesn't protect you from papilloma, on record, go read the trials, kills people, and is obviously a sterile. I'm not saying your local doctor or a nurse is a bad person. I'm saying the people at the top of the pyramid are muy El Diablo. Let's talk to Timothy in Virginia. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Um, just want to mention one quick thing. Your InfoWars magazine, the, uh, the Full Throttle Liberty uh, Centerfold, uh, with uh, Leanne McAdoo and the 50 calibers and the Trans Am and all the explosions, well, they would say we hate women because we because we have that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I thought it was a celebration of America. It looks like it's a celebration of, of life. In a exactly, we do it all for America. Well, what, what I'm going at it. I think that would be great. You do a like a full poster, so that up, you know, on your store or something. I think. Uh, you know, Infowars, uh, war people would love that. Uh, well, that's how we're going to win the Second Amendment, private property, everything. We put women on top of capitals. We put women on the fronts of ships. All our answers went into battle with flags with women on them. My grandfathers put them on the side of their planes. I've already lined up, and I'm going to, when I soon, I got too many projects going. We're going to get a bunch of uh, ladies in here, and we're going to have a whole bunch, just, just a, 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 a squadron of lovely ladies. Uh, to go out and promote liberty. And, of course, Leanne McAdoo will be, uh, you know, right at the center of the uh, phalanx. Uh, but uh, very, very exciting uh, to promote liberty uh, the way it's meant to be. Anything uh, else? Uh, yeah, just one more thing. The, the drought out in California, uh, don't you think that maybe that has something to do with a little bit of that geoengineering, all those chemtrails, and maybe a corporate land a power grab of all the, the farms out there, the people are... Uh, experiencing all the droughts. I mean, those farmers have to sell their land. I mean, you watch the, the video, um, what's it called? Uh, Why in the world are they spraying? You watch that, and that totally convinced me that maybe what's going on out in California right now is just uh, total just geoengineering a drought. They're just doing that to take all the land. Well, I mean, here's the bottom line. There is massive geoengineering going on, and 
That's just a fact. But it's so secret. They admit they're doing the giant global program. North America is their main battleground. But they won't give us the details of what it is. So people say, man, there's weird weather. Yeah, how do the, 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 there is weird weather. How do we know they're not false flagging us uh, to then sell all this? But I totally agree with you. Yeah, uh, organic farming is huge out in California. And it's supposed to be on the rise this year. But with all this drought, it's, I mean, food prices are going to skyrocket. And uh, organic uh, farms are probably going to end up having to sell out to Monsanto and people like George Soros to be able to to get out of there. And they may even be forced to leave. You know, uh, if they don't have water to do a Well, they've farm, caught the IMF and World Bank. They've made a James Bond movie, not the last one, but the one before last, where the big bank shuts off the, the water from the mountains so they can buy up the country. That was actually a true story. Yeah, yeah. That was where? Quantum of Solace, yes, that's actually based on a true story. Uh, but the whole point is, is that, yes, no, no, they're, they're messing with everything. They're playing God, and until we admit that's going on, we have no chance in facing it. We have to admit we're in a manipulated paradigm, a matrix-like paradigm to be able to change it. Thank you, Timothy. Uh, Kevin in West Virginia, thanks for calling in. You're on the air worldwide. How are you, Mr. Jones in Bizarro World today? I'm doing pretty good, brother, talking to you. Well, um, I have a couple. Um, I wanted to say that I totally agree with Obama being a dictator, and the whole Obama administration needs to come down, and the Tea Party needs to be put in there, and we need to have people like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, you know, back in place. You know, we need our country back. I feel I'm 29 years old, and I want to have the same rights you know, and, and to grow up and to have the same things that our forefathers had. And um, there's another issue I have, too, with, um, um, with welfare. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to answer this or not. Um, I'm on welfare. I'm blind. And I... Uh, I don't have any problem with you being on welfare. It should be locally covered by the state, the city, or the churches. And, uh, uh, again, people that are actually disabled, that's, that's what it's for. And, and quite frankly, if somebody was on welfare and didn't vote to take my guns and they couldn't get a job, I'd be fine. It's, it's you're going to be on welfare, come here, be made legal, and then vote to make me your slave? No. No, no, no. That's the issue. They've shut the jobs down. They've shipped them overseas. They're disabling people with all the soft kill. we got the highest cancer rate in the world. I don't, I don't bemoan people that are on welfare by hazard, by, by being thrown onto it. I don't like J.P. Morgan Chase publicly running the welfare system nationwide and trying to get people onto it to bankrupt things while they try to get rid of the economy to make everybody poor so they can domesticate everyone. I'm going to come back to you. Stay there, Kevin. Kevin, welcome. Hello again, Mr. Alex. Um, as I was talking, I, I'm, I'm blind, and um, they give me $700 a month to live on, which is total bull crap. And what I like is how other people, you know, they... Uh, who don't need it, you know, suck off the system, and, and, and then they, they vote to take your guns and to enslave us. I think it's wrong, and I have this fighting spirit, and with the only $700 that I have, I can't, I want to fund the operation. No, oh. people that don't have money have no responsibility. You can spread the word about the show. Listen to this for a minute. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, you'd have a more diverse, larger family and they would take care of you, and you'd have jobs you could do, like watching the house when they were gone, uh, and, and raising the alarm if there was any issue. And if you didn't have family, a local church would have you live in the church, and you would basically just be somebody that kept, uh, no pun intended, an eye on things. You, know, you would just be there, somebody uh, to you know, kind of uh, you know, help out with stuff. That's how society works. Instead, the government comes in with charity, and so now there's no reason for anybody else to be involved in it. Uh, and I know it's very frustrating. Have you ever gone to a school for the blind? Or, because they have a lot of industries for you. I have tried, but I keep screwing up myself. I keep, I keep you know, wanting to, uh, I, I, I'm my own worst enemy. I, I, you know, the zero drug tolerance, not smoke pot, and I feel sorry for myself. And so I smoke because I went down that. Well, I mean, I, I mean, listen, here's the deal. It's coming out that. Uh, people are smoking pot, and, and it's not as bad as alcohol. I don't smoke it. And I just think it's discriminatory, and I, and I do think that uh, 
that, um, you know, that's really prohibitive. Plus, they ship the drugs in to begin with. But I get some places not wanting to be around potheads because some people really abuse it. But I know it must be hard to live on 700 bucks a month. You know, I would, uh, I, I would try to kick it, go through the system, and I would try to become more entrepreneurial. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would uh, use the fact uh, that you're visually impaired, as they say, uh, to, you know, try to learn how to do it and develop it and, you know, get a food cart or something and, uh, you know, make a, make a, not a joke out of it, but, you know, but make, make that the issue of, hey, you know, come on over. Thanks for your, you know, you know what, these are really good hot dogs. I know they taste good and I get the best ingredients, but make sure I'm making this right. Is that good? Everybody would come to you instinctively, just like in the old ancient village, if somebody was blind, they would take you with them fishing and then you would help them out with stuff. And then you would be impaired in that one area, but instinctively ancient cultures knew that someone impaired in one area would generally be more advanced in another. Uh, like in an ancient culture, someone who was blind would end up developing other senses, and then you would end up being like a shaman or a witch doctor. Uh, but we just don't have things figured out nowadays is, is the larger problem. Uh, but listen, I really appreciate your call, brother. Nobody's judging you for being on, quote, welfare. $700 a month in this inflationary situation you imagine plus they got us all focused on people like that on welfare as we go bankrupt instead of the big mega banks that are getting the majority of the money who lobby to get more people on welfare out of the system dependent fellow schlafly is coming up in the next segment to break down the facts on our opinion about the national suicide it's already suicide anyways. If we take on another 30 million illegal aliens, give them all welfare, and then that just lets the next group come in who then almost universally vote for the Democratic Party and all of their kleptocratic activities. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. 51% can't vote to make me a slave, but they're operating like that now. I saw a Time Magazine cover the other day that had the capital on it and it said majority rule and was X'd out and was saying the majority in a fake poll want to ban guns but we can't do it the majority want Obamacare it was an old magazine but we can't do it the majority want to have their heads chopped off we can't do it there's a new article out at Infowars.com poll 71% wish they'd not voted for Obama even 55% of Democrats say they regret re-electing the president too late suckers and it doesn't mean Romney would have been even better. The fix was in. That's the point. Matt Drudge tweets report warning about suicide of the GOP. And then that's got Shafley's report uh, reposted uh, in it. So be sure and get that out to everybody you know. Uh, right now, let's uh, go to another phone call. Andrea in Michigan, you're on the air. Thank you for calling. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? I'm doing great talking to you. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, um, I'm calling about something that I heard another caller say earlier. So I woke up this morning and I was just really thinking, um, you know, how for the last few months you've been feeling in your gut that there's a false flag and uh, coming up. And I just was thinking, um, I saw a really cool... Um, on uh, YouTube, a ge geoengineering uh, scientist has got a video out. And I really think that that might be what they're up to in California um, because it just, there's not enough evidence and they're getting smarter because too many people out there are kind of pointing out their false flags. And it just seems like that's um, something that uh, maybe you can blow the lid off of, you know. Well, uh, sure, here's the problem, and I'm not criticizing anybody. Everybody uses the layman provincial term chemtrails we started hearing about in the early 90s. And there's a, a patent, and they, the guy won a 92, won a, I forget the scientist's name, uh, a UN science prize for developing, quote, sunscreen for the earth. Kids' textbooks teach that they're already spraying it to save us from global warming. But the details are all classified. It's added to jet fuel under four patents, so the pilots don't even know what's going on. It's aerosolized, barium salts, lemon dioxide, others. There's a $5 billion a year energy de uh, Department of Energy program and they do seem to be concentrating out on the West Coast with all that moisture coming in, manipulating and stopping it. And they've got aircraft out there spraying, and we know what's going on. And they've had even people from the California Department of uh, Environment you know, go out there and, and, and go, yeah, we're getting like 20 times the aluminum. We're getting barium salts. The trees are dying.
So I don't know what's going on because the program's secret, but it's bad. And it's weather modification, you name it. And I mean, the globalist will pay to ship General Motors to China, will pay to ship Jeep to Italy. They'll, 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 they'll pay to shut down your local power plant. Uh, I mean, they are shutting America down, except for select globalists who are exempt. And it, it's, it's, it's just a serious situation, I hear you. So we, we do need to look at the California drought. Is it a chemtrail operation? And look at the geoengineering program and admit it's going on and show that it manipulates weather uh, and, and, and do a report for the nightly news or something on that. I, I agree with you. I appreciate your call. All right, Phyllis Schlafly is going to be with us for about 40 minutes on the other side. And then we'll have about 10 minutes or so of uh, news reports and, and calls if you still uh, are able to, uh, to, to stay with us. Uh, but all this and more is coming up straight ahead. Deneen, Nico, Andrew, Steve, we'll get to all of you as well. But Phyllis Schlafly, and she, of course, is a best-selling author, and she became the, the leader of the conservative movement with the publication of her best-selling book in 64, A Choice, Not an Echo. And I'm not going to go over all the things she's done in her 47-year, and this is an old bio battle. It's more than that now. And she has uh, testified before more than 50 congressional and state legislative committees. Uh, she was appointed by um, President uh, Reagan, a member of the Bicentennial Commission, and she promotes all things Americana. And they've gone out and indexed the poll numbers and showed what I, what I and many of you already knew, but it's good to document it, that the vast majority, between 75 and 90 percent, depending on the poll, of illegals and, and even immigrants, period, tend to vote Democratic, anti-gun, anti-family, you name it. And even though it's not in their interest, they, they, they want to be pliant. And they just vote straight ticket. And I've got big criticisms of the Republican leadership. They've been supporting this uh, amnesty with the Republican uh, big donors um, because they're part of this globalist agenda. But all over the world, they've gotten rid of borders partially. And they've just, Europe's going bankrupt. They use the immigrant populations to become the new bureaucratic enforcement arm. Uh, I've had members of the uh, EU parliament on, members of the UK parliament, even liberal members on, talking about th this situation. And if you can get a group to come in who can then vote to get welfare in exchange for voting for parties that will take guns uh, and that will take liberty and take sovereignty, you have been conquered. You have been conquered uh, demographically. Uh, I'll be honest, if we had 30 million illegals here and they were green skinned, uh, not predominantly you know, light brown skinned from Latin America, and they were voting for the Second Amendment, national sovereignty, freedom, war on welfare, it's a lot of people, but we've aborted 50 plus million Americans. Maybe we need them since Roe v. Wade. The problem is the ideology is pure poison. And if you haven't traveled Latin America, I suggest you go travel it. It's a nightmare. I'd love to export freedom down there. Instead, we're exporting uh, the poverty, the crime up here. I mean, Mexico is a failed state. And this idea that we are somehow hateful and criminal, when we already have the most open policies in the world, if we don't just throw our doors open and say, have your babies here free, all the welfare, and we won't wear American flags at school. We'll take down American flags. Uh, we won't dress as cowboys or natives uh, at uh, you know college uh, parties on Halloween. It's a joke. Oh, you criticize Obama, it's because you're racist. No, it's because Obamacare is a scam. So I want to give Phyllis Shafley the, 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 the floor here. I've said my piece to break down her tip of the spear coverage that's been on DrudgeReport.com from the Phyllis Schlafly Report at EagleForum.org. You can also go to phyllisshaffley.com, uh, and she joins us right now to break this down because Obama is already, in. I want to cover what's going to happen if they do this, but then Obama's already legalizing most of the illegals by fiat. So the Republican leadership, A, is being beaten on getting amnesty because it is suicide for the country, but B, they have to be beaten on letting Obama act as an executive dictator. Doesn't mean he's a dictator fully. The office is becoming dictatorial. So... Um, Mrs. Phyllis Schlafly, thank you so much for coming on. You've got the floor. Give us this report worldwide that people are tuning in to hear right now. Well, hi, Alex. I'm happy to join you. And uh, you laid it out very well. Uh, these people who want to bring in millions of people, uh, they're going to vote Democratic. 
And uh, we know this not because it's my opinion or because I've talked to them. It's because all of these recognized pollsters uh, have reached a consensus on this, and uh, there's no dispute in it. These these pollsters all say uh, that the ones coming in, the big majority of them, are people who believe in big government offering more services uh, than limited government, balanced budgets, and that sort of thing. And you know the conservative movement and the Republican Party are built on restraint in government, limited government, and the uh, millions of uh, of uh, new people they're bringing in are not that at all. They have no experience with it. They don't think they like it. They're glad to come here and accept the welfare goodies that our government hands out. And you've got seven plus billion people that would like to come here. And under globalism, there's no sovereignty, no borders. That sounds like they want to make us the new Calcutta. Well, I think it was Ronald Reagan who said a uh, country without, uh, without borders is not a country. You, you've got to have borders, and uh, we expect people to respect them. And if people want to come to this country, they ought to obey our laws. And uh, these pollsters, for example, uh, they, they've taken a poll on uh, whether you whether you want the children in the public school to to be taught that America is a great country, and of course the big majority of Americans uh, think that, uh, but the uh, the recent immigrants, even if they're naturalized, uh, not even the majority believe that. And uh, they ask them, "Well, are you for Obamacare?" Well, yes, they are a majority for Obamacare, and. Uh, it's no wonder, why is anybody surprised that they vote for the Democrats? That's, that's the way it is. You know, I know a lot of Democrats, and, and, and finally some of them are waking up, that Obamacare was a premeditated fraud and a scam to select interest, uh, a literal looting. Uh, but uh, so many Democrats just say, I don't care, we're going to wreck the whole system, and then I'm going to get something free. I mean, I mean, they don't even care if they're getting screwed over as long as they feel like they're part of some winning team. I mean, I've got to say it. Democrats on MSNBC love talking about how smart they are all day. I don't know if you've seen Mark Dice's videos where he goes out and talks to Democrats in California, and they say the most authoritarian things. They don't know that the earth orbits the sun. The average Democrat has got to be the stupidest person on the planet. Well, maybe they think they're smart because they've learned how to get uh, free money. And uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, these polls are, are really very, very revealing. And uh, they, they, these people who are coming in uh, are people who have no experience with our type of government. You've heard people say that we are an ex exceptional country. Uh, that word isn't even strong enough. America is unique. There's no other country that is built on the idea of limited government, as Thomas Jefferson said, bind them down from mischief with the chains of the Constitution. And we think they ought to keep their spending down and keep taxes low and so forth. And other countries don't, don't even understand that. They, they depend on the government for uh, <laughs> practically to walk across the street, whether they can or not. And uh, they, they don't know what we're talking about when we say we want a smaller government doing less. And uh, so if you bring in the people who want the government running things, who want the government uh, doing ha handouts, uh, you're going to get more Democratic votes. Why are you surprised? Well, you're certainly right. And America was hyper-unique, hyper-exceptional by every metric of inventions, trailblazing, military activity, just on every front, literature, art. We have been the flower of the Renaissance in the last uh, 230 plus years. And now we see all the prosperity going out the window as we follow the globalist collectivist program that always creates rack and ruin. Well, all of these trade agreements, uh, which are presented in the name of globalism and getting along in the world and free trade and all those slogans, uh, they create jobs and investment in other countries. They, they don't create them in this country. We lose jobs. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a real betrayal. This is why the middle class has been shrinking every year under the Obama administration. And uh, so uh, it, it's, it's just this new report that I have out. It's a 40-page 40, 40 report. It's available on my website. Uh, eagleform.org, 
And just to give you another example, one poll found that 81% of native-born Americans uh, believe our schools should teach that students should be proud to be American. But only 50%, only half of the immigrants, even after they're naturalized, believe that. And, you know, these, uh, these amnesty advocates like to uh, compare our current uh, immigration with what we were bringing in around 1920. And the people who came in from Western Europe in 1920 uh, all wanted to be uh, real Americans. I, I have any number of friends who told me when they came as a teenager and landed at Ellis Island in New York, uh, their mother or father would say, now we're in America, and we're going to be Americans, and we're going to speak English, and this is our country now. And that's not the way they feel about it today. Uh, the ones who are coming in seem to maintain their allegiance to their own, their own, their old country. And when you take the oath of citizenship, you're supposed to renounce all allegiance to any king, potentate, foreign government of any kind. And I don't know whether they recite all that, but it, it's obvious they don't believe it because the polls all show that uh, they're not proud to be an American, and uh, they uh, really don't believe in the type of government, of limited government, that made our country uh, the most prosperous and the freest country on the face of the earth. That's right. You can't argue with the cold, hard, scientific, sociological, geopolitical facts. Um, I want to go to break here and come back and get into some more of the poll numbers that are uh, on the site. For everybody that wants to go check them out, eagleforum.org, absolutely essential. Phyllis Shafley is our guest right now. And when we come back, I'm going to let her continue to get into the battle. What's happening currently on Capitol Hill? Uh, tireless fighter. I guess it's more than 60 years she's been battling. Uh, 89 years old and joining us today, as sharp as ever. She's the same age as my grandmother. Uh, and is battling the tyrants here today. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say it again. Nobody's got open borders like we do. Nobody brings in foreigners and throws them right on welfare. Nobody. Nobody. It is simply insane. It is simply insane how uh, our hospitality has been used by the globalists to bring in a foreign force of politicos. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. And she's had a whole bunch of best-selling books. We're going to talk about her newest bestseller, where Obama is waging war on the First Amendment, uh, not just the others. Uh, religious freedom is within the First Amendment. We're going to talk to her about that in the next segment. In the short one, though, uh, Phyllis, please, because you're, you're pausing and letting me jump in. I want you to roll here. Uh, because you've got all the deep data and the research. Break down what it means if they get this next crop of illegals legalized. Obviously, then the next group, the next, we're in total checkmate politically because, uh, because these folks are voting in a collectivist um, manner. And I've tried to reach out to the, quote, immigrant population with some success, but we just can't reach enough of them. Uh, a, is there any way to turn this around? B, how do we beat it? And what's going on in Washington? goodness for t talk radio because the mainstream media is uh, is concealing the whole thing and there are two powerful lobbying groups that are pushing for more uh, more illegal and legal immigration and uh, they are the big business crowd who want the cheap labor and then of course the Democrats who want the vote and my report which is now available on evilforum.org it's 40 pages there's a lot of uh, st uh, statistical stuff uh, if you want uh, the abbreviated uh, every man's version, you can ask for my Phyllis Schlafly report called Does the Republican Party Have a Future? But in any event, what these polls consistently show is that three-fourths of the Hispanics coming in want a bigger government providing more services. I'm talking about services uh, like uh, health care, Obamacare, and only a tiny percentage uh, even understand or want a smaller government. And you know that if, uh, if we want to leave a country of freedom and prosperity to our children and grandchildren, we've got to cut down the size of government, stop these executive actions that Obama is taking on his own, which he is un doing unilaterally and says he can do whatever he wants with his pen. And uh, we have to realize that these people coming in, uh, the overwhelming majority of them, want the government providing big services, and which is, of course, very uh, costly in every way. 
expanding on that, look at what a monumental fraud and a deception Obamacare is. Everything that's being pushed is really bad for the overall population, bad for common sense, bad for fairness. But still, people that are part of the Democratic Party cult uh, just don't care. They, they just think they've won. And then you've got the people like Boehner and others that uh, are bought off by the same interest. I mean, what do we do about this? Well, the facts are so overwhelming. For example, the Congressional Budget Office, which certainly is not a right-wing source, said that Obamacare is going to cost us uh, over two million jobs. And uh, mostly by companies reducing the number of hours that their employees can work. And the Obama administration p tried to put a happy face on this by saying, oh, that's great. People will have more free time. They'll be able to do more fun things that they want to do when they're not working. Well, that's not the way you get ahead. And that's not the way you support your family. Uh, we, we believe in, in work and full-time work, and we hope guys will have a good job full-time that's going to be able to support his family. But that isn't what Obama wants. He wants to cut the amount of work people are doing so they're working less hours, getting less money, and then they are have their uh, insurance uh, paid for by the taxpayers. It's all so rotten now, Alex, I, uh, it, and, it, and the high-handed dictatorial way that Obama's doing it is amazing. But these polls are very compelling in showing uh, this is what the people think about this. And, and they're not voting for amnesty. They're voting for handouts by the government. And they get that by voting Democratic. And then they'll support literally making those of us that produce their slaves. And then George Soros and Warren Buffett, big con constituents of the Democrats and big um, recipients of, 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 of corporate welfare. And, they, and then they write the laws to be exempt from the taxes. They're lobbying to raise taxes on the middle class. This takes us back to a democracy where two wolves can vote to eat the sheep for dinner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be a, a joke if it weren't so really tragic. Uh, the, the way they, uh, the way are manipulating the people and making them think that the government is the the source of goodness and money and and the number of people who are now on food stamps, uh, the number of people who get housing supplements, the EITC, the Earned Income Tax Credit that just uh, gives you a bigger tax free refund than you were entitled to otherwise. Fellas, I've got to interrupt you. Stay right there. One more segment with you, Fellas Shafley, eagleforum.org, to read all the reports. We're going to come right back to you. I want to finish up with those numbers. Then I want to get into the overall unitary executive, what your new book's about. Stay with us. Mine has doubled uh, in the last, since it went in six months ago. Geraldo Rivera was on the show a few months ago. His has tripled, and for that of all of his six employees, tripled. Uh, and uh, my dad's has more than doubled. And everyone I know, it's at least double. Because some, some it's only gone up 45, 50, 60 percent. But most people, it's more than doubled. So if you average it, it's about a doubling, to be technical. And that's just year one. I mean, this is just going to get better and better. And the reason I raised that is they said, hey, if you don't like Obamacare, you're racist on MSNBC and CNN. And there are no death panels. And none of this is true. We, we had the bill. And now Obama acts as a dictator, implementing what he wants, where he wants. Oh, unions, you're exempt, but not families. That's the ultimate form of discrimination. While they're talking about discrimination, we don't like it because he's black. Let me tell you, I'd vote for a black man in about half a second if he was like Ron Paul. I could care. I'd love it. It'd be even better because then they couldn't attack him as much. But they, but they would, though. They, it, it wouldn't work if they were libertarian or conservative. It is so disgusting when Obama said two weeks ago uh, in a Time Magazine interview and was other in the New Yorker, similar things that, well, my poll numbers are down because of racism. What? What? And I, I'm ranting. We got Phyllis Shafley with us of eagleforum.org. And Ms. Shafley is, is like one of the icons of true conservatism in this country, best-selling author, constitutional lawyer. Getting into amnesty, how do we beat it? Where is it? But then we go to the next problem, as you know, your your best selling books out about it. Doesn't matter. Obama is just legalizing a bunch of the illegals, ordering the courts to let people go, 
in the in the amnesty courts. He's just doing it by executive fiat to begin with. So where's the Republican leadership beginning impeachment of the president turning the office into a dictatorship? Well, I hope you saw him on your your television screen when he said he had a pen, has a pen, and he can do whatever he wants to do, and a telephone, and it is. And uh, it was so arrogant. It was so condescending to Americans. It was embarrassing if we think we're a self-governing people. And he has changed his own law, Obamacare, I think personally, unilaterally, about 30 times. And, uh, it, and he just wants to do whatever he wants to, to uh, get the Democrats reelected. And I think the only way we can save our country is to elect a majority of conservatives to the U.S. Uh, Senate in November and get the right guys nominated in the primary. And it, it, it is so important because, for example, if Obama gets another appointment to the Supreme Court, uh, he would rule the country with his nutty ideas for the next 50 years. And, <clears throat> and we cannot afford that. We need to have enough uh, senators to stand up and say, we're not going to give him any more judges because some of these, I call them supremacist judges, uh, are as bad as... Uh, Obama in trying to uh, remake the law and dictate to the American people. You, you've been fighting this tyranny for 60 plus years as a constitutional lawyer, but I've studied political elites, I've studied history. Even if you were a corrupt elite, America and prosperity is incredibly profitable. You would rather skim off the top of that big large yes than destroy it and debase it all so you can run it. But tyrants always debilitate everything because they hate individual freedom and they jealously want to shut it down, thus destroying the engine of their own success. But I, I want to warn the political elite, including the Democrats, you are literally burning down your own house. You guys run the country now and you have such a long-term hatred of men and of families and of women and of prosperity and of just uprightness. I mean, I've, I've really studied these people, and now I've come around to the understanding that they really do want to screw stuff up. They really are, like Michael Savage said, I think mentally ill. Uh, if you disagree with that, tell me, uh, Phyllis, but, I mean, you've been fighting these people for a long time. What is wrong with them? Well, they want power, and they think the way they would get power is to make the America, American workforce be in competition Oh, with the people in the rest of the world. You know, a lot of our products are starting to come from Vietnam, uh, where they work for 28 cents an hour. And I do not think Americans should have to be in competition with people like that. We have clearly a better system, a unique system, a prosperous system, a successful system. That's why everybody wants to come here. And uh, we should let in only people who uh, like our country, obey our Laws, like uh, Switzerland, I mean, I mean, you could have ten million dollars. They won't let you in unless you have a skill you're bringing. Uh, Switzerland, their money only goes up in value. Their crime only goes down. They get better and better and better. Why don't we do what Switzerland did? That's right, and they just voted down this increased immigration, and that's why they've been able to keep a a free and prosperous country. And we should do the same. But the trouble is, the the, the media is so. So much in favor of Obama, no matter what he does, uh, they 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 try to uh, ruin anybody who criticizes him. But Americans have got to speak up. We have a great country. We need to not let anybody in except somebody who wants to honor our country, our flag, our constitution. And we don't. And you know, the polls are showing, Alex, uh, that the majority of these people coming in think international law should top our constitution. You got to be kidding. We're not, you and I are not going to let international law trump our Constitution. That's right, and you have all the polls listed uh, there from uh, the Pew Research, you name it. There's a whole... Yes, all the ones that everybody else quotes, only they don't seem to quote the part about uh, what they believe on amnesty. But all the, the polls are, are consistent in saying that the overwhelming majority of people coming in uh, want bigger government handing out more services. It's basically like a beautiful ship that's not perfect, but it's the best out there, and you've always envied it, and you finally got on board, 
and then the Democrats hand, hand you a dynamite to put in the bottom of the ship to sink it, and then you dynamite the ship and you're sinking, and you're like, I won, I brought down America, instead of just joining with America. I, I just, there is a real hatred of this country, and I'm sick yes, of it. there is. There is a hatred of this country, and there's a hatred of the institution of marriage, too, uh, which I hope I have a new book out on. Yeah, let's segue into that. Let's segue into the attack on religion, the attack on marriage, Obama's... Well, my last book is, is uh, 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 No Higher Power, Obama's War on Religious Freedom, and you can see that everywhere, the people who want to be politically correct. Uh, even the military has done some things like clamping down on, on prayers and the, and the oath to serve God and country, so help me God. And, uh, and the superintendents of the of the public schools are, well, they're going after little kids, won't let them mention Jesus or sing a Christmas carol. And, or bring a Christmas card, even though everybody else is allowed to do whatever they want. Yeah. And uh, it's a real war on the First Amendment. Obama's idea about uh, the First Amendment is you should have the right to go into your church and lock the door and say a prayer where nobody can hear you. And that'll be okay. He's not going to take that away from and you. And by the way, for those that don't know, um, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It means you don't have a state-run religion, but you could absolutely come to school and you can hand out Christmas cards, you can hand out Muslim material during the lunch break, you can hand out atheist material. As a valedictorian, you can give whatever speech you want and thank God. As a football player, you can, and they know that, and they are persecuting people where they find Bibles in people's bags in, in public school in Texas and, quote, throw them in the trash and suspend them. This is outrageous authoritarianism. And, of course, the Founding Fathers and all presidents prior to Obama uh, were quoting their faith and their belief in God all the time, honoring the National Day of Prayer. Uh, for example, when uh, Obama gives a Thanksgiving Day address, he makes a whole long list of people to thank, but God didn't make the cut. And he's just trying to eliminate any public mention of God. And our, our country was built on people believing in God and being a religious people and people of faith. Why is it that the, the collectivist and Soviet types uh, hate God? Is it because they, obviously the state is God and they don't want any higher power above them? Yeah, that's right. They, they want the state to be in control of everything. And we don't. And we've got a proven best country. Uh, that's why people want to come here. And, and it's... Uh, it's the most freedom. It's the most prosperity. And Obama has this nutty idea that it really isn't fair that the uh, United States uh, uh, has uh, so much good things of life and and uh, more prosperity than any other country and more power than other countries. And he wants to make everybody equal. And we don't want to be equal to all the poor countries. And we don't want our guys to have to compete with people making products in Vietnam who work for 28 cents an hour. Well, it's not fair trade when we have all the regulations and bureaucracy and shutting down our power plants, and they go to Vietnam with no regulations, dumping the toxic waste right in the river. And this is all about Cloward and Piven making us dependent. In closing, spend a few minutes on the attack on the family. It's so naked now, the attack on women, the attack on manhood, I mean, the uh, MSNBC, I'm sure you've seen their promo where they say, your kids now belong to the state. I mean, these people are really being naked about the, uh, their takeover. Why do you think that is? Oh, well, they, they're feeling that they've won and they want to, want to sock it to us. And uh, the only way we can remain a free country is if parents are in control of their children, not the government. Uh, and if, if we are able to elect a congressman and representative who believe in limited government, lower taxes, and letting people spend their own money and uh, instead of the government spending it. And uh, these are the issues that are so important in the upcoming uh, elections this year. And I urge everybody to go into the primary where, where the, you know, I, I hear people say in November, well, I don't like uh, the guy on either party. Well, that's your fault that you weren't in there in the primaries getting the right guy on the ballot. Because he's not going to get elected unless he's on the ballot. Well, it's definitely a lesser two evils, and I've never even been of that view. But the Democrats are going...
We're total broke. The Republican leadership's trying to kill the Tea Party. We've got to get behind the Tea Party, which you're a proto founder of uh, across the board. But I think about my grandmothers and how they interact with my grandfathers. Um, all, three of my grandparents are gone. One of them's still here. They, they weren't subservient women, but they were on a team in that family. And that family came first, and they were powerful, effective, smart women that you know, would read to me for hours in the summer when I was visiting them and who were super smart and had, you know, multiple degrees. Oh, they from, could read? Yeah, yeah, they could read. And, <laughs> and, and, they, and they wanted a strong family. And I remember my grandmother, my, uh, you know, reading me uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, when Ulysses comes home and everything and his house has been taken over, kind of an example of what's happened to America. But they were just such strong, powerful women compared to what women are today. And they call this modern thing a, f a feminist, and it, it, it's the complete opposite of an empowered woman. You know, notice the feminists say, "Don't, don't let women own guns." I mean, it's just so insane to see how they are destroying men, they're destroying women, all the things they're getting away with. It, it's so disgusting to see women becoming married to the state, basically. That's right, because when you you don't set up the family. A traditional man and woman, where the man is the provider and protector, uh, and then all these babies appear. Uh, if you look to Big Brother government to support you, and that's not the kind of country we want. Well, you're supposed to put the load on the men so they compete and make a stronger society, not not say uh, men are nobodies, they're idiots. Women, you're in charge with the state. And of course, everything falls apart. I mean, look at illegitimacy in the black community. Less than 10 percent. Uh, before the Great Society in the 60s. These are mainline numbers, now upwards of 90%, and that same system's being deployed. It is a system-wrecking program. Uh, we're going to plug the website one more time, but I want to play you the clip since you mentioned it. Uh, here is Obama saying, I've got a phone, I've got a pen. Uh, we are not just going to be waiting for legislation in order to make sure uh, that we're providing Americans uh, the kind of help that they need. Uh, I've got a pen. And I've got a phone, uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. And then since we were mentioning MSNBC and promo saying your kids belong to him, uh, here's uh, Melissa Harris Perry uh, going from memory on her name on there saying, you know, we need to get over this idea that your kids belong to you. They belong to the collective, a bunch of control freaks. And again, at the level of MSNBC host, they are known technocrats with a scientific sociological takedown program. I've read their textbooks. These are cold-blooded culture killers. Let's play that clip and then get Phyllis Shafley's take on it. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. And once they get you into government health care, they're going to run your life because, well, we're all having to pay for your health care. Uh, yeah, Phyllis. If you let Obama appoint any more judges, you know, the Ninth Circuit said that parents' rights to control their own children stops at the threshold of the school door, and the schools take over. And we cannot allow that to happen. It's unbelievable. Every nightmare visited upon the Soviet Union and other collectivist hellholes is now manifesting. Um, in, in closing, and I appreciate you coming on, what is your gut level about this battle? H how bad is it going to get? I mean, I, I know we're going to win in the end, but how hellish is this going to get? Uh, well, I think the elections this year are absolutely crucial. They may be the most important elections of our time. And I urge everybody to go into especially the Republican primaries and make sure you get good guys on the ballot so that when we come to November, you've got a good guy to vote for. You're not standing around saying, I don't like either guy on either party. It's time to get really aggressive and, and uh, run for city council, run for county commissioner, run for water commissioner, run, get in the PTA, fight yeah, it. Fo then, Alex, uh, go on Eagle Forum's website because we will have a, a list of endorsed uh, candidates for the Senate and the House, and that might be helpful to you in deciding who to vote for. Absolutely, and that's eagleforum.org. we only got 30, 40 seconds left. Uh, what's it been like? Uh, you're 89. What, what's it been like, Phyllis, battling this hard? Is it satisfying? Uh, well, yes. I, I hope that a lot of good people are active in politics so that we can uh, keep this self-governing country and not let it slip through our fingers and get away from us. All right. God bless you. Thank you for all you do. God bless. There goes Phyllis Shaffley. Wow.
Uh, I mean, it's just like I tried to stop Obamacare and I got called a racist. And I'm trying to stop the total end of our borders that the big banks want and I'm a racist. I mean, man, I want people in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia, in Europe to be literally bathing in wealth, space stations, whole nine yards, okay? I want you to succeed. I'm desperately trying to stop forced artificial shots in Mexico, sterilizing all those people down there. The globalists want to hurt everybody, folks. We, we cannot pay for illegal aliens and then legalize the next group. And, and I want to just tell all the illegals that the system does not care about you. Get that through your head. And all the fake liberals out there. You people are sick. Another headline. Let's read the polls about amnesty. We've reposted what Sh Phyllis Schlafly was just talking about. Johnny Carson's head writer, hence Leno, was ditched over Obama jokes. I, I already basically know that. I mean, I'm... I'm just gonna. I'm gonna leave it at that. Breaking police advice uh, on protesters in Ukraine, and it's showing that the West is basically funding all that. Seventy-one percent wish they not voted for Obama uh, in a new national poll that's out. That's that's really important. Uh, so that's just some of the news up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com right now. Look, I got loaded phone lines. I said I'd go to your call, but. I just don't know how much overdrive I can do. We're, we're about to launch the new InfoWars. I think it looks really great. And we're going to launch it either later this week or early next week. I'm not going to procrastinate anymore, and we'll do some tweaks on it and stuff. So i got to go mess with that. And uh, about to launch the new studio and a bunch of other stuff. We're finally there, thanks to all your prayers and support. But I will, I will go to break and come back and take a few calls. First off, uh, paying the bills here. It's our great sponsors, MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. Has all the great specials, the best storable food company out there. Others preparing the supplies as well. MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex to find the specials. Non-GMO, best customer service out there. That's why they're our sponsor. We got sponsors beating down the door. I could have 10 storable food companies. I don't. I have one. 866-229-0927. MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. And don't forget uh, our different websites. We've got the new Molon Labe Second Amendment shirts in that are the best out there, our best seller ever. I knew it would be, and it is. Uh, really wakes folks up about come and take it. Great way to spread the word and to meet like-minded patriots. That's available at madein1776.com, subsection of InfoWarsStore.com. It takes you all the Made in America uh, apparel. So it's all up there at InfoWarsStore.com. And then it funds our entire operation. And there's InfoWarsLife.com which is also on InfoWarsStore.com. It just takes you to the, when you go to InfoWarsLife.com, directly to the subsection uh, of the four products we have out, the Fluoride Shield, the Survival Shield, the Super Mel Vitality, the best supplements out there. Just go look at the reviews, read about what they can do for you across the board. And then we've got the uh, Southern Mexican organic, uh, volcanically grown, high mountain Arabica beans, two different blends. It's my favorite coffee. Everybody loves it or says it's their favorite. You've heard the reviews. Infowarslife.com or call toll free to ask any questions or to order over the phone. 888 253 3139. 888 253 3139. And we are self funded, the old fashioned Americana way. We're not funded but like MSNBC with taxpayer bailouts and stimulus money or NPR. Uh, or by the Rockefeller Foundation and tax money, uh, who's also anti-gun openly. That's an article out today. We are funded by you checking out the products, liking them. That's why we try to, try to sell you the best products. It's called free market ideas. We sell you the very best we can get at the lowest prices. There's got to be 500 great items that I use, I believe in, from InfoWars branded dash cams, the lowest price, to you name it at InfoWarsStore.com. And in closing, before I go to break, come back in overdrive and take some calls quickly, you can also spread the word about the show. You don't need to buy anything from us. Tell friends and family about the broadcast. That's how we defeat the enemy. Support your local AM and FM affiliates. Buy local sponsor time with them or support local sponsors. Go check them out. Drive out of your way. Tell them I came here because you're on the local station, the Alex Jones Show. That's how we continue to be on a growing list of over 160 AM and FM stations across the country. Thank you all out there for the wonderful job you're doing, getting us on those stations and to those stations uh, carrying us.
and to everybody else out there that helps us. You know we love you. We'll be right back. Some stations don't carry it. Infowars.com forward slash show for the free audio feeds or the subscription, PrisonPlanet.tv. We're going to come back with Andrew and uh, William and others that have been holding Nico. Stay with us. Let's go right to your calls. Andrew in New York. Thanks for holding her on the air. Then Nico. Then William, at least. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey, how are we doing today, Alex? Good, brother. I uh, calling in from New York. I uh, deliver, actually, out on a military installation. I find it funny. We've got uh, all these crazy things going on in the world all the time, but all it takes to get in without your proper identification to the military base is a pizza bag. They... Uh, don't do as much security as they should, considering all the things they say we got to worry about. Yeah, most of it's staged. Oh, absolutely. We uh, out here at Fort Drum, actually, up in north upstate New York. They uh, pull you. I got pulled over once going through the gate. They uh, open your vehicle up for their unconstitutional inspections, and all they saw was a pizza bag. Okay, you're good to go. So if you ever want to do anything, all it takes is a pizza bag. You don't need big weapons. You don't. You don't need much to get on and do what you got to do. Well, again, um, it, I don't even say it's unconstitutional when they search you going on a base. That's a military reservation. But they're now exporting that onto the streets, which is unconstitutional. And uh, it is all total theater. Even if terrorism was real, honeybees kill more people every year in North America than terrorism does. And so why are you fear-mongering? You know, school shootings, deer kill more people. What do you have, TSA on the highway to stop deer jumping out in front? It, it's it's a power grab, period, any way you slice it. Great points, Andrew. Nico in Illinois, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Good. I see the topic you called in. Go ahead and ask your question. Um, uh, yes, sir. Um, Mr. John B. Wells got kicked off of coast to coast, and I, I did a little bit of research, not much, and that's why I hope you guys can do some research. I'm going to be really fast here. Uh, you know, I think he got kicked off because Premier Radio Network is a big supporter of the, uh, the Bush family or whatever. and uh, because he was too popular and too truthful. So just look into that, and I appreciate that so much. And uh, the other thing is I called in a little, uh, about a month ago doing a Hank Hill impersonation, and you were like, oh, that sort of sounded like Hank Hill. Well, let me tell you, sir, I do voice impersonations, and if you could give me like 10 seconds here, I want to do an impersonation of you from the best sound bite this century that I've heard on TV. And I uh, I don't watch TV. Go anymore, ahead. Go so. ahead and do it. All right, here we go. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you got, they're begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. You understand me? I bet I can do a better one because it's me. But hey, listen, great job. I appreciate your call. Listen, I'm not getting in the middle of this John B. Wells, George Norrie, uh, Coast to Coast AM deal. I really like John B. Wells. I think he's a very smart, talented guy, and I consider him a friend. I've hung out with him a few times. Uh, and I and I really consider George Norrie and all them friends, and I know George likes him. George had nothing to do with it. The Coast to Coast people didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, he started his own private show separate from theirs, and there wasn't even a discussion of it, and I'm not getting in the middle of it, but it's not for what he said from what I know. I haven't called John. I've been sick and had family stuff going on. I need to call John about that, and we tend to keep having him on the show and keep having George on the show, so it's just fine with us. You know, it's not my business. I just stay out of the infighting stuff completely. Uh, and Coast to Coast has never censored anything I've said or done. So there you go. That's what's happening uh, with that. Uh, last call, I'm sorry to Scott and Fred. William in North Carolina, go ahead. Hi, Alex, how you doing? Good, brother. Uh, I'm calling about the solution that you've been uh, begging for somebody to call in and tell you. Tell me now. For the last several years. Um, it's a due process mandate uh, of, of uh, the grand juries. The grand juries have, have the ability to neutralize democracy with respect to constitutional acts. We don't have a conversation going on in this country on that subject. No, I agree. That's juries are supposed to nullify democracy activity. Grand juries are. Yes. Juries are supposed to decide guilt or innocence. No, I know, but uh, I mean, juries can also vote on unconstitutional laws. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you mean a grand jury. A people's grand jury can can manage government where we haven't had managed. No, but I'm saying jury nullification works in juries as well. I hear you. Call me back again another day. We'll talk more about it. That is a big part of the solution. I agree with you.